listening to Party Starter Radio with Versus. Starters, we are finally back here in Vegas. After a crazy spontaneous road trip up to Montana, the other half of Party Starter Radio Joe worked on a movie, Cuisine de l'Apocalypse, so we drove up there for the movie premiere and it was absolutely awesome. Everyone had a different theory about how the apocalypse would happen. When provincial. And in the end, everyone was right. But you know, it's not as scary as you might think. It's actually kind of a vibe. Massive rainstorms are wreaking havoc along structures in the Northern California area. Citizens of New Missoula are being urged to take precautions. I've been meaning to talk with you about your little kitchen you got here. What are you talking about? It's the biggest kitchen in New Missoula. You really don't understand what's going on, do you? Let's earn that Taco Tuesday. The movie was really funny, and honestly, more than anything, it was really nice to disconnect for a couple days, get away from the city, and just enjoy the nature and the beauty of the West Coast. Thank you guys for all tuning in to the last episode with Sam Blackie. We gained 56 new subscribers, so like we said last time, we're going to be betting 10 cents here at our favorite local casino, Suncoast, for every subscriber we got on YouTube. We've got over 560 subscribers, so in honor of our first MMA guest today, we're here at Suncoast to place a couple UFC parlays and a couple UFC bets. We've also got our Dallas Mavericks ticket for them to win the NBA championship still alive, so you guys all better be Dallas Mavericks fans out there so we can win that 500 and give it away to one of you, but they'll be playing the Boston Celtics this week in the NBA Finals. Let's hit the casino, and hopefully we got some luck this time. here at Suncoast Casino in Sunderland, right by our house. We're putting a little UFC parlay as we got the champion Islam Mahakovic fighting Dustin Poirier in my home state of New Jersey tonight. Let's put a little parlay in. Alright, we got a couple different parlays. We also got Dustin Poirier in case he decides to pull the guillotine, plus 2,000 against Islam. I think Islam is taking it home. Those Dagestanis can't mess with them. Bitch, am all real. All right, we had our second trip to Suncoast. We got no luck on the slots. I don't even know if we hit a spin at all. We might have won one or two. But we got a couple parlays tonight. We're going to head home now. We're gonna go watch the UFC fights. We got Islam versus Dustin. It's gonna be a crazy fight. Prudential Center back in Jersey. All right, let's go watch him. Nice takedown. Oh! Oh, the high Let's go. All right, so Nico Price got the first win on the parlays, so that's keeping us alive. Now we need Sean Strickland, and we also need Kevin Holland to guarantee us our first win to get that $500 to you guys. All right, let's go. Time for fight two. Bro, this guy is tough. Oh, he might have it. Oh, we want this. He's got it. Tap. Tap. You're going to snap your arm. You're going to snap your arm. I can't watch it. I can't watch it. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my god. We wanted that, but oh my god. Oh. He said, what up, Donnie? 
<laughs> Strickland just walks these dudes down. It's crazy. Oh. Snapped him back with that left hand. Dink. Hey, let the fucking dog out of you. Right? Let's start pissing on the fucking floor. <laughs> Come on. Come on. One more. <laughs> Let's go. So we went three for three in the first three fights. That means no matter what, if Islam or Dustin win, we are winners and we're gonna be adding to the pot that will be going to you guys when we hit 500 bucks. If Poirier wins and gets the chokehold, I think we're halfway there at like 250. So let's go. We got the last fight, championship fight coming up next. <laughs> What a fight, what a fight, both guys. All right, so we won the parlay with Islam taking it down. So I think that's like 70 bucks that goes into the pool. Once we hit 500 in winnings, that will go to one of you guys. So make sure you guys subscribe to this video. And yeah, we'll be betting 10 cents for every subscriber we have for every new episode. Let's go. And now, this is the moment you've all Waiting for Adriano the King of Morales. Why you want to act like that? Why you play hard? I came here for the wordplay and came up to fuck up your whole day. Why you want to act like that? Why you play hard? hard, hard. Adriano Marias, he is a dangerous fighter. I don't think anyone should be underestimating him. It would absolutely be a mistake for any flyweight in the world to look past Adriano Marias. He was the inaugural flyweight champion in one championship, and since then he's really dominated most of the flyweights he's come across. He's in deep on that choke. Done. My money's on this guy, and I'll tell you why. Because of this and the skill that this guy brings in. I train with this guy. I watch him train every day. It's gonna be one of the greatest fights ever, and it's gonna be one of the best upsets ever. Yo, what's up everybody? This is Versus, reporting live from South Beach, Miami. We're here at Mango's. I'm so excited today because this is actually the first time that we've got a special guest on here that is not a musician or a DJ, but he is for sure a party starter. When we came back from Miami last year, we had so much fun with all the interviews and all the responses that we knew we had to take this brand to the next level. So as we sat down with the team, we said, we've got to bring on anybody that's a party starter. It could be an athlete, it could be an influencer, it could be one of you guys. So I'm so excited today. I got to read this one. You guys, if you watch my seasons, if you watch all the episodes, you know I never do notes. I got to make sure I introduce this one right. I'm super excited. If you follow my socials, you know I'm a huge, huge UFC, MMA fight fan. So without further ado, our guest here is the eight-time, one, flyweight world champion, a former Shudo South American champion fighting out of Brazil. He is a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and I know he will kick my fucking ass if I do anything. We've got the boy, Adriano Moraes. Oh, Welcome, brother. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate man. Thank you to welcome here in the Mangos and the Party Starter Radio, man. I'm very excited. Let's talk about everything. Yeah, dude, we're, we're so excited to have you. Me and you have connected through our friend Otavio over the last couple months. It's such a small world how we connected and everything. And then just now, you know, we basically had a podcast off camera with the conversations we had. I'm going to jump right into it because we were just touching on some really awesome points. You know, you've had an amazing career and we'll go, we'll work a little bit backwards. We're going to go, you know, a little bit more forward first. And we were just talking about your trilogy with Demetrius Johnson and, you know, you uh, going back and forth and everything as well, too. I really wanted to touch on, you know, the last point that you were saying before about you, you were in One World Champion. And as fighters, you know, there comes to a certain point, especially when you're a champion, as long as you are, where you almost need to, like, take another road or do this other thing or have another chapter and everything. And eventually, everybody's dream is to hit the UFC and everything. So can you tell me a little bit about that, of what your experience has been like with One World Champion? And then also, again, like, always fighting towards that ultimate goal of eventually being the UFC champion as well, too. Yes, yes, of course. Like, as a fighter, like, as an athlete, for me, it's... Uh it's very emotional, it's very a pleasure to have this kind of talent from God, you know what I'm saying? To do what you love to do, it's a fight. Since I was a kid, I'm, I'm fight, you know what I'm saying? My mom put me in judo when I was a kid. So I've been fighting across Asia for 
10 years yeah. you know what I'm saying and uh, but every fighter dreams to go to FC one day you know what I'm saying like and I think uh, as an American top team member right now and I have a lot of teammates that are fighting UFC and a lot of pro notion worldwide you know what I'm saying so it doesn't matter which organization you're gonna fight you know what I'm saying I think the best thing you you to be a fighter like in and out of the cage you know what I'm saying like um, be a pleasure to be like on top of the, the sport is uh, really really good you know what yeah. I'm saying and uh, and to help each other as a fighter, you know what I'm saying? Like one day you're gonna be in the fight camp, another day your friend is gonna be in fight camp. So you travel together, you have this kind of journey. You met some uh, legends around the world, you know what I'm saying? Like when I fought Dimitri Johnson, I was like following him, his career for as long as I, I would never imagine that I'm gonna be fighting against him one day. So nowadays I, I, I had a trilogy against him. So uh, you never. You cannot give up, you know what I'm saying? You cannot give up, you need always dreaming, pushing forward, that every, everything gonna happen, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you said, I never imagined fight against him, so nowadays I, I have a trilogy. The first fight uh, was really, really like crazy moment of my life. It was like in the, the time of COVID-19. Yeah. Uh, we traveled across Asia, was in Singapore. Uh, was in an empty arena, so it was crazy. Um, was crazy the pressure, but since that day, since when I, I became a fighter, I know the ple the pressure is a privilege. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So I entered the arena with that kind of mindset. I never changed, you know, as a fighter as I am. So I knock him out. Top position now for the champion. Throws the knee to the top. DJ's hurt. It's good night, Irene. Adriana Moraes defeats Demetrius Johnson. It was an amazing moment of my career. It was a changed life, you know what I'm saying? So one year later, I gave him the rematch. So he knocked me out this time. Yeah. It was a crazy moment too. Yeah. So I needed to- You were winning, in my opinion? You know, I was, I was- I, I thought you were winning that Yes, fight, I was man. winning yeah. the fight, but I got caught in the fourth round. It was crazy. It was like the biggest defeat of my career, but it was against one of the greatest of all time. So I needed to stand up, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Came back to the gym, training hard again, you know what I'm saying? I asked for my boss for, the, for my rematch, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, uh, with this fight, we had the, the opportunity to bring the one championship to the United States, so we make this big event in Colorado. So uh, it was May 5th last year. Sick. Uh, the fight was back and forth, crazy, you know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, I lost for by points. Yeah. It was really close fight, but I was fighting against the hometown guy, you know, yeah. one of the greats of all time in his hometown, was crazy. So I lost by unanimous decision, but I always stand up, you know, I always yeah. make my, my head uh, on top, you know what I'm saying? I was looking forward and now I'm waiting for my next opportunity, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Well, we know the door is going to be knocking very soon. <laughs> I, we're going to focus on all of your successes and stuff, but I, I love your, your energy and just how positive you are. You know, even when we were speaking off camera, we were talking about you were eight-time champion in one world, Demetrius is champion there. At that point, you also had your own contract where you can't leave one at that point, and it's like you two are the best at that weight class in the world. And like arguably, like I, I don't know this, are you the the world record holder for the most title defenses and wins then as an eight-time world champion? Like I can't think of someone in the UFC that's... Yes, you won championship. I was of the, this division was the the recordist, yeah. and DJ was in UFC in that time. You okay, know? yeah. We we both was the best flyweights in the world in that in that time. You know, yeah. me and my team, you you always was argue with each other like, hey man, would it be nice if you go to one championship because we. We always wanted this fight. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's like the two bosses got to fight eventually exactly. at the end game. Yeah. But nowadays it's hard because the contra, they, unfortunately, the fighter cannot fight each other against another organization. You exactly. know what I'm saying? So we need to wait the time. But that time, uh, when I think 2019 happened, the big, the biggest trade yeah. of the MMA world community. Now, ben Askren went to UFC, and we received. Dimitri Johnson at the one championship. Yes. 
So in this time, uh, I say, hey, if the one of the greatest of all time came to a championship, it, it's because I have to be here. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna wait for my my, my time. Yeah. To make it happen. Yeah. And we just realized something pretty crazy. And I don't know. In life, I've I've had a lot of these little occurrences in my own life where something you don't realize in the moment actually changes so many things in the long game. That trade actually winds up having you then, Demetrius, come in into one world, you knocking out Demetrius. If that trade doesn't go down, arguably the most iconic knockout by Jorge Masvidal, who's one of your other gym partners as well, doesn't happen. Ben Askren's then not in the UFC. The flying knee doesn't happen. And it's just it's just so crazy how one thing, if, if it turns around, it changes the whole trajectory of history brother, and fighting history. Brother, it was funny because, like you said, change everything. How how good the universe is when you pray for, you yeah. know what I'm saying? When you do the good things, everything yeah. gonna happen in your favor, right? Yeah. The fight against Masvidal and Ben was before my fight. Yeah. So I was talking with Masvidal after his, he make that fight, he knocking out Ben Askren. Yeah. Then my fight coming up against DJ. I remember I had a conversation with Masvidal, and he said, Adriano, a knee can change life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that shit stayed in my mind. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I said, man, that's true, you know, because after that fight, Masvidal, man, increased a lot his oh, popularity. Yeah. yeah. So after that, then I knock him out DJ with the knee, you know? And after this fight, we have a dinner. <laughs> me, uh, me, Masvidal, and uh, Kyoji Horigush. Yeah. He's our Japanese teammate too, big friend of mine. We have a, a, a dinner here in Miami, especially here in Miami. And he say, I told you, you know what I'm saying? I told you they need like can yeah. change lives, you know what I'm saying? Oh man, change my life completely because if it is not cow, I'm gonna go my new country if you want championship, yeah. you know? And that was a, a really a, a life change. Yeah, it's so crazy. And even with that, I didn't even think of that either. You both did it with the knee and like complete parallel to it. So it's just, it's so nuts. And again, I, I wanna get to your championships and even some of your maybe most memorable moments. But one thing that stands out is it seems like you don't uh, back down to adversity or perseverance. And I was telling you off camera, you know, I have a, a friend, Phil Caracappa, who's been coming up and every time he fights, I have, I feel like I take more pressure on myself as somebody else who's chasing the dream all these years because I could have a bad song come out and I could just release another one or I can make another one. Like we said, one loss can dramatically change not only your career, it changes sometimes the circle around you and all those things. How do you like in those moments stay so positive? And in losses, like whether it's a, a finish or a decision, does one or the other feel worse? Like, you know, I don't want to be like negative, but like when you walk away from one, would you rather lose in points or lose and just go, okay, you know, he caught me. Anybody can, you know, that can happen in any fight. I, I don't beat myself up. The points, like, I don't know, maybe the second round I could have done better, or maybe this or something. Yes, it's hard, it's hard to say because uh, uh, in a fight, you can train hard. Yeah. You can make the best fight camp ever. But in a fight, it's always 50-50. You know what I'm saying? The emotion, uh, the feelings that uh, that being in, in in the fight, in the fight day is crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some fighting have some behavior the kind, another one some behavior the another kind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's differently. So that's why like MMA is, is the is the spot the most increase in the world. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody loves to watch because it's always 50-50. You can bet like no, I know uh, this guy is gonna win by knockout because I know he's much better because his fight is always forward. Yeah. But that day he wake up really bad, man, exactly. in bad mood. You know what I'm saying? You never know. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the guy, and the other guy who everybody think he gonna lose, yeah. he gonna win the fight exactly. because in that day he wake up really good, in good yeah. mood, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's funny. Uh, it's the kind of how, how you believe it. Yeah. I think what's gonna change is how you you believe it, how you're gonna give the, everything for the thing you believe. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, example, you can lose a lot of fight, you can lose a lot of things, yeah. but one win can change everything. Exactly. I, I, I sometimes change your life for, for forever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 100%. So I think you have to believe. Yeah. It's not because you lost a fight or you lose something 
you're not you're, you're not good at all in that this exactly you know what i'm saying yeah it's not like when you lose you it never can say who you are exactly you know what i'm saying you need to be like i mean like every day when i woke up i say man i'm a fucking fighter yeah. i'm the best in the world but i'm i feel like that yeah. you know what i'm saying because i am you know what i'm yeah. saying i feel like that so when you think like that everything around you can be easy yeah. you know what i'm saying because you know bro i'm a fighter i can do that you know what exactly. i'm saying hey if i lost my last fight i gonna come back to the gym change some stuff you yeah. know and do again let's go yeah, you know what exactly. i'm saying i'm gonna do again you know yeah. what i'm saying let's let's do it i'm gonna looking for for the next opportunity yeah to change it if I, like if i I kick wrong, I have a mistake on this, I have a mistake that I'm gonna like fix it up everything inside the gym with my coach, with my teammates. Yeah. In a positive way, I'm gonna change my next opportunity, I'm gonna I'm gonna make win. it even better then from there. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, what's up party starters? Make sure you guys like this video, subscribe to the channel, and if you haven't already, head over to Love It Apparel, who hooked up all the merchandise for this season, and they also got the exclusive party starter radio merch. Let's get back to the video. It, you know, I think it's what's so interesting with almost like the NFL with the Super Bowl, it's you have that one game where then in all other sports really for the most part, you have a series and okay, you lose game one, you can adjust. How many times people lose the first three games and then come back when the next four, it, it, you just gotta believe like, no, we didn't lose yet. Or, you know, this was whatever, make that adjustment. Um, you yes. know, and, and I, I yes. give- Yes, like example, uh, Muhammad Ali, yeah. Mike Tyson, Everybody lose a fight, exactly. you know. Uh, now you're gonna say they have a failure career? No. Of exactly. course no, you know what I'm saying? We are athletes. Yeah. We're gonna have a good days, bad days in the offs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's not failure, you know what I'm saying? Like You guys have one of the hardest office jobs. I think we can yeah, all agree it's, on that. It's too. happened yeah. sometimes, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But like I say, it's important always you like celebrate your yeah. victory, you exactly. know? Exactly. Celebrate because you're alive, yeah. you know? Sometimes you lose, but you're gonna celebrate. Sometimes your B gonna be a little bit bad, you know, but yeah. you, you have to celebrate, you know? Exactly. And, and now going off that, this was the other question I wanted to say. Yeah. Eight time world champion. Obviously, the first time that you're raising the belt or the belt's put on you, it's gotta feel insane. Was there one of those title defenses that you won that just really meant the most, whether it was because of the fight or maybe you even had something personal going on that? people didn't know about or you know something that just made that fight and that win just feel damn that uh, was good my first world title yeah uh was on off the pinnacle of my career because yeah. was on cambodia yeah i don't know if you you know cambodia is uh, close to vietnam yeah was in the capital of Phnom Penh, and i was uh in the uh, really small theater yeah and i was fighting against a philippine guy Jehel Stakio uh -huh. and uh, this fight happened in the in the big Naga war they put in in the middle of nowhere yeah. in, in, in Cambodia you know yeah. they have a, like a big casino Naga war in the middle of nowhere when I arrived there I said well man what is this Naga Woods how they build it here you know yeah. what I'm saying because Cambodia is a lot of like poverty around, yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it's a is a country like suffer a lot with the Vietnam War. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You could see in the face of the people of that country like the sadness were like crazy. Yeah. But they still feeling positive. Yes. You yes. know what I'm saying? I yeah. remember I was walking around the city, everybody say hi, hi, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's so positive. Yeah. And that makes me think about life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Man, look at that. Those people suffer a lot with the Vietnam War. Yeah. They don't have not the poverty is so like intense you could see with your eyes. Yeah. And they still so positive, so kind with everybody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I say, oh my God. I need I, I, I really need to be grateful for my life to be here today to make this title fight. Yeah. You know? And the fight in the fight they come over and uh, we were like inside the cage. I love to be inside the cage, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like it's one of the best places I love to be. And uh, the fight started was, man, I was so light, you know, I knew that was my day. Yeah. In the second round, I, I, gave, him, I gave him a nice guillotine choke yeah. and he tapped. And I became the first one flyweight world champion. 
so ever of the organization. And uh, when Victor Cui uh, put the belt on me, I hugged him and said, hey man, thank you very much, you changed my life. Yeah. Thank you to believe uh, on my work ethic yeah. and to, to, to put me uh, in, the, in the greatest platform to showcase yeah. my, my, like, my gladio spirit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, and it was nice. The grave, my, my feeling of grave was like one of the big things I ever felt in my life. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, so you can imagine the celebration of the, uh, after that, right? Oh, it was I amazing. <laughs> Cambodia was but, all celebrating Yeah, but it was, uh, this title fight was one of the, of course, against DJ, I was defending my belt too. Yeah. It was really cool. But that one was, that changed my career, like for a sure. lot, yes. Do that. Like a simple, like a normal fighter for like a world champion fighter, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And did you have friends, family out there, or was this like early no, on? No, I so? just was with one teammate, one coach, wow. because when I travel to fight, you have just one coach, one teammate, sometimes the organization just pay for just one corner, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Depends where you're working from. How was title fight? I, I could take two people with me. Yeah. And what was it like the first time you went home to your family and friends back in Brazil? No, it was nice, man. It was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, my friend was waiting from uh, airport, you know, everybody. Yeah. With some, uh, with some bottle of vodka in the hands, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, my friends, they were like, let's celebrate, motherfucker. We're a world champion. Yeah. Uh, let's do it. And in Brazil, my city, the electronic music scene, it was always huge. Yeah. You know, I grew up here, like, Alok, Basca, Suarupi, Ekanta, yeah. you know what I'm saying, Gabe, Eliwaza, so Alain Villar, so everybody knows how the electronic music since I was a teenager, so yeah. when I arrived, we going, went straight to the party, you know what I'm Let's saying, go. Like, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. the party starts Let's then, the party starts yeah. soon, man, and, uh, you know what I'm saying, you have, you have the backstage tickets, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Yo, what's up, party starters? This is Versus, and I have to give a huge shout out for one of our sponsors for Miami Music Week, Gaiki Yerba Mate. They sent over a whole bunch of product to keep us going and to keep the party started. My personal favorite was the Blue Foria one. So if you guys haven't already, make sure you guys check this out. It's 100% natural. There's not as many peaks and crashes as coffee or other energy drinks. I'm a huge coffee buff normally, espresso, and honestly, I think I might have only had two coffees the entire week. Huge shout out to Yerba Mate. Make sure you guys go check it out. Keep the party started. Ah, Yerba Mate. Dude, you have to embrace that moment, you know, and enjoy it. And even ourselves, like the last couple of days, we've done now, uh, what is it, seven events in four days. We have our last event tonight. We've got an event going on right now. Gene Farris is ripping it downstairs. Yeah, it, it's just we had to take a minute the last couple days and even last night, like looking over, like I've known Leandro Da Silva who hosted the party with Roger Sanchez uh, last night for, I don't even know, six, seven years now. He gave me my first booking in Miami Music Week. And there was a couple times that Joe, who's my partner in Party Starter, Kim, who's the artist liaison and everything. And, you know, we've all interacted with Leandro for so long. Not only was I excited for us and you know the party starter brand but to see him come in from italy bring all this production have all this stuff have all this success in a whole nother market even for yourself i mean just traveling from brazil to cambodia to you know japan asia all these different places as a fighter in the middle of camp while going for a championship your body clock your diet like it, it affects everything it affects a lot right yeah so coming back you're just like it's the release. You finally take the deep breath and you're like, all right, now we got to enjoy this moment yeah. with everybody and everything as well. Is there anything else you do, whether it's in the middle of training or just even when you have your free time? Like, I'm, I'm sure a fighter's mindset and mentality, it has to just be absolutely one of the sharpest things. So is there anything that you do, like let's say you're feeling a little bit imbalanced or you feel a little bit off, is there something you do in order to make sure that like, it doesn't mess with your training or your fighting. Like I know for myself, sometimes if I sit down and I'm trying to write a song, if the idea is not there, I don't let myself force it. Cause it almost makes you feel like, what the hell? Like, why can't I get something here? So is there anything you do to kind of just balance yourself out and make sure that your mind is as sharp as your fighting skills all the time? Yes, for sure, man. Uh, as a fighter, as an athlete, man, I need to meditate. Yeah. You know, I need to have my mindset always on clock. 
Yeah. Like I'm the guy who likes to wake up early in the morning, you know, make my brief exercise. Mm -hmm. I like to meditate a lot. Sometimes put a, like a nice, a nice chill out music, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And try to feel the, the power of universe. Yeah. Can touch my mind, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, um, I think this kind of uh, exercise that I do help me a lot to be like peaceful, yeah. you know, in the middle of a war. Yeah. You know, because be a fighter sometimes have fight schedule, fight camp, uh, you have travel, yeah. you know, have to take care of your family, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because I need to take off some heads to pay my bills, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Sometimes, uh, sometimes a lot of this kind of pressure yeah. take our mind on odd stage, you know, and I don't want that, you know? Exactly. I want to feel like I'm a normal guy doing a normal job, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like you say, I meditate a lot. Yeah. Like I like to do yoga. Yeah. Uh, the jiu-jitsu philosophy helped me a lot, you know, because jiu-jitsu is sport, MMA is business. You know what I'm saying? So I try to bring jiu-jitsu philosophy there for my life. Yeah. You know, for me to do my business. You exactly. know what I'm saying? So it helped me a lot too. Um, and even like you just said as well, you know, trying to really connect to the universe. Yeah. Like I, you know, I've been talking with again my partner Joe is my best friend, my roommate and stuff too. And I feel like a couple months ago, I, I finally truly, like it clicked for me, like the whole manifestation manifestation thing. Do you feel like that's kind of what you mean in the sense of like connecting with the universe, getting in that mindset and like visualizing the knockout or visualizing, visualizing I am the know, champion. Yeah. Yes, visualize the knockout, visualize how gonna be a fight, yeah. you know, how gonna be the fight week. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You cannot adjust everything from that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everything that you don't want to receive, yeah. everything you want to like, try to retain for your yeah. life, you know what I'm saying? Like to, to achieve your goal, yeah. you know? Sometimes I like, as a fighter, as a young fighter, as a fighter, you always want to win, you know what I'm saying? Man, I want to win, I want to win, you know? I want to knock out this guy. Yeah. And that's the correct mindset, you know? I want to keep my belt on, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I want to change lives around me with my feasts, you know what I'm saying? Because when you are world champion and the life the people you like yeah. change too, yeah. you are a good world champion, exactly. you know what I'm saying? But when you are a world champion, but you have money, you have everything, but everything around you is like getting worse, you know what exactly. I'm saying? I don't think that belt is going to do really good for you, you know what I'm saying? I don't yeah. think that that kind of blessing. Yeah some time can take you out you know what i'm saying so sure. and i don't know i don't want that so that's why i always stay positive humble guy you know what i'm saying i yeah. know where i came from yeah so that's why uh i think uh everything that i achieve in my life every blessings that arrive in my life I always just grow you know yeah. what i'm saying and like let's say the first time you really felt like all right you know what i got got some money i feel a little comfortable was there one thing that either you treated yourself to or you did for somebody around you that you remember was like, okay, I, that was my first time really spending a little bit of money there? Uh, I'm the kind of guy, like, I always like it to enjoy my life. Yeah. I, I always like to bring uh, the pressure to my side and say, hey, you are my best friend, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, a kind of gangster life, spiritual gangster mindset. I always like to live like that, you know? I yeah. never like put some pressure and say, hey, I'm comfortable. Oh, I cannot do that. Oh, I'm comfortable. I need to take off from my home. Like, yeah. no, no, I don't put me in kind of prison, my mindset in kind of prison, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm trying to be like a water, you know? I just, man, life is going on. Yeah. I'm gonna take my opportunity, I'm gonna enjoy. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna train hard because I am like that. Yeah. I'm the guy. You know, 100%. if you be with me, like on my days, you go say, hey, stop training, man. stop doing that, man. Relax, let's rest a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We're very similar. Yeah, because I'm <laughs> the guy like, well, like sometimes we're like work You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like sometimes my wife say, my wife say, hey, hey. Yeah. I'm, it's like I'm addicted to the craft. You feel pain, like my neck, yeah. oh, you know, man, stop training, stop. You can relax a little bit. Like yeah. you don't have fire, relax, you know. And I said, okay, yes, you're right, you know, I need to rest a little bit. Yeah. So, and the time, like, you cross your legs, you know what I'm saying? <sighs> Breathe a little bit, you know, calm down yeah. and say, hey. One thing that I learned when I make my trip for Egypt was, um, you need to relax in this life because 
this next life is the most important. It is. Yeah. Sometimes people forget it, yeah. you know, and try to do everything in this fucking life, everything, man, I need to achieve, I need to do that, I need the money. Wow! Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, brother, relax, man. Do the that. next life is the most important, you know? You don't need to, like, you don't need to be, like, crazy like that. Yeah, that's go. one of the coolest Bro, things go I enjoy your enjoy your music you know yeah. enjoy your family you know be ready for your fight yeah you know but trying to enjoy the process don't yeah. be crazy to ah i just be happy when i achieve this i just gonna be happy when i have some money on my bank account i just you know what i'm saying yeah if you ask for the guys who always like was with me yeah they can say hey john sometimes you need to like hey, hey wake up man yeah you know because i was i think i'm dreaming i'm a dreamer yeah, you know I, too, I, man. yeah since i become a world champion since since like you know, i have a good country or not since i move on to florida you know i came from a little city from brazil and uh, achieve a lot of dreams i'm keep dreaming yeah. you know i'm keep dreaming you know what i'm saying i keep you like making new goals you know exactly. what i'm saying and uh, i think that's helped me my life go forwards you know like and yeah. uh, help me to bring the blessings from the universe to be like relax yeah. and train jiu-jitsu i think jiu-jitsu helped me a lot you yeah. know what i'm saying like uh be active yeah. be in the gym you know yeah. do exercise you know what i'm saying that you like it yeah eat good food you know exactly surround your surround surround you with good people yeah and dance man dance exactly. you know what i'm saying dancing always helps a little bit yes. too always always honestly adriana i mean besides fighting it's just that is maybe one of the best pieces of life advice i've ever heard is like you know you obviously you don't want to look forward to necessarily what's not in this moment because as humans and in this physical thing we're so attached to like i'm here you know and yeah. you know joe's heard me say it a million times where i'm just like listen the last thing i want to do is get the hell out of here i love life you know i i just love life so much i love the grind i love the business and stuff but you know it's it's always been something even as a kid where I, I'm very strong with my faith, you know, like God has blessed me so much, even just getting me to this point through this week, like every single person that worked here this morning and saw me walk in, I had a bucket hat, my glasses and a hoodie on, like, how the fuck are you up right now? I'm like, thank God, I, I don't know how I'm up, I don't know how I'm going, but it's my faith, but that is the most important thing, you know, especially if you have that faith is, well, what happens after this, you know, with our souls and stuff, and if you're a good person here, if anything, we're super lucky that we don't know anybody else or anything else out there that has the same experience. So yeah. we're having this unique experience in this universe. Enjoy it, yeah. dance, enjoy it with your friends, like have that good meal. Like, you know, don't always be, like you said, just so locked into the moment or the stress and these kind of things. So it's so crazy to hear. I, I like want to end on that one, but I got one more quick one for you. At the end, when you're, you're done with the fight, you get that win. What's the first cheat meal where you're like, all right, I can fucking eat whatever I want. What's like your favorite thing to eat? Bro, I love pizza. Oh, let's go. You know, I love pizza. I love pasta. You know what I'm saying? Sushi. I love it. You know what I'm saying? Ramen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I lo I, like, I always was a skinny motherfucker. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So for me, I never had problem to eat food. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I think <laughs> for me to cut away was really, really, really easy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, uh um Do you think my biotype was, was helped me a lot in yeah. this, this war you know what i'm saying yeah. but um when you're getting old like my nutrition is i would say man you need like eat healthy you need to eat good you yeah. know it's not means you cannot uh, eat a hamburger that you like or yeah. like pizza that you like you know exactly what I'm saying? you just need balance this you know yeah. what i'm saying like ah uh, like i have a goal like i want to example i'm gonna a lot of students men say that like I want to lose some weight in like three months, yeah. okay? You say, okay, you, you have to train, but you have to see what you're going to eat. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, you can like sweet, yeah. you know, you can, you can trade, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Today I'm going to take some salad, you yeah. know what I'm saying? For the weekend I eat some hamburger, you know what exactly. I'm saying? Uh, if you you're look gonna, to it Yeah, almost. if you're going to eat like some piece of pizza, yeah. Okay, let's trade. Tomorrow I'm gonna run like five miles. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Like your life must have some balance. Like example, ah, today I'm gonna party, I'm gonna drink a lot of vodka, okay? But next Monday I'm gonna do like two trains, okay? Yeah. yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. It's really that balance. That, that balance, keeps everything yes. in check. You know? Adriano, 
this has been one of my favorite episodes. I'm, <laughs> I'm so happy that you were the first one to, you know, uh, break us out of just being party starters that are DJs or artists and stuff like that. This is going to be the first of many. We'll definitely have you back on the next time we're down here. If you're ever in Vegas, you got to come hang out and definitely do another podcast with you. I can't wait to see you back in the ring. I know you're super excited. Like you said, when you're in the octagon, when you're between those walls, it really means something even more different for you. I wish you all the best, man, and I, I can't wait to see what comes for you in the oh, future no. as well. Oh, man, thank you very much for having me. Uh, I appreciate like to have this conversation, talk about my journey a little bit. Of course. And um, I can't wait to be inside the cage again, to excite all my fans around the world, you know, and bring the win for everybody, man. I can't wait. Let's thank go, man. Much. It's coming. Thank you so much. <laughs> I really appreciate it. All my party starters, make sure you guys go follow Adriano. Make sure you guys are staying connected so his next fight, he's got all of that energy and all of that support behind him as well. Literally getting chills as I'm saying that now. we got a big knockout coming in the future. We're now on Spotify, so if you guys are watching it on YouTube, we're at Party Starter Radio on all our socials. Head over to Spotify, save our previous episodes, and you guys can watch them on the road. Until next time, peace out, everybody. Know that they fly, know that they ride or die I keep boys by my side, CJ I Now I gotta roll with ice They came here for the wordplay And came up to fuck up your whole day Why you want act like